So occasionally I do get comments discussing whether or not object oriented PHP is better than procedural PHP. And this is something I will get because I do have a object oriented PHP course. And I do also have some project videos where I have a object oriented version and I have a procedural version. And sometimes I get people jumping into one of those project videos, not really to watch the video, but to let everyone know that you should not learn object oriented PHP. So I figured why not do a short video, just kind of going over what exactly are some of the benefits and you know, you call those pros and cons when it comes to learning object oriented PHP versus learning procedural PHP. What exactly is the difference between procedural and object oriented PHP? And is it something you should learn? You know, what are the pros and cons to learning each of these different styles of coding? And of course, there's going to be a lot of people watching this video who do already have a lot of years of experience when it comes to object oriented versus procedural and just knowing the differences. But there's also a lot of new people watching. So I figured why not just do one for them, you know, so they know a little bit about, okay, so there's something called procedural and there's something called object oriented. And should you listen to people who tell you not to learn object oriented? Like what exactly is that all about? So the first thing I want to point out here is, well, point out, I, I can actually show you because I set up this very basic example here. But as you can see inside my code editor here, my, my Visual Studio code, I have a example of using procedural PHP and I do also have an example using object oriented PHP. And these are very, very bare bone examples, okay? Again, it's just an example to kind of prove a point here. So the code inside my editor is not gonna make any sort of sense. It's not gonna do anything. It's just so that beginners can see the difference when it comes to the visual of how procedural looks like when it comes to object oriented, okay? So inside my editor here, I do have an example of procedural programming. And again, this is going to carry over into JavaScript if you're interested in JavaScript. So again, it's just basically procedural versus object oriented. It doesn't really matter with the language itself. So inside my editor, I have a index page. And inside my website, I would like for a person to go in and be able to type in something inside this particular input here. In this case, it's just a username and a password. And that basically means when they type it in, they're going to send this information to another page inside our website. In this case here, I'm sending it to a form handler that inked the PHP. And if I were to take a look at that page, you can actually see when it comes to procedural PHP, again, PHP in this example here, if I were to go in here, you can see that we basically just go in, we check for a request method to make sure that this was submitted by a form. Then we go down, we grab the data, and then we actually do something with it. In this case here, we authenticate the user by doing a authentication function that we have somewhere inside our code. And that code could, for example, be inside a file called login.ink.php. Uh, which basically just have a basic function that goes in and does some sort of authentication. Again, the code doesn't make any sort of sense, uh, but just to kind of show how we split up the tasks inside our code into different functions, maybe inside a separate page so that we don't have to rewrite code all the time and we can reuse our code and it's just a much better solution. Uh, so that's why we use functions inside our code. Again, this is very basic programming. This is something you learn almost immediately in any sort of course. Um, so the basic idea here is that you have this one file that takes care of the actual request from the user. In this case, you're logging in into the website. And then you just have a separate file that has a bunch of functions that might be related to a login system. So that is how you would do that. But when it comes to object oriented PHP, you would do it slightly different. So if I were to go inside my object oriented example here and go inside my form handler that the PHP, you're going to see that it looks a little bit different. We do still go inside and check is this actually accessed by posting the uh, login form. And if so, then we go in and grab the data. But then we also go in and we want to include a file which is going to be a class file. So in this case, you're not a file that is full of functions, but a class that has login specific properties and methods. For people who's never done object oriented before, properties and methods are kind of the same thing as a variable and functions, but not quite. But just to give a very, what should you say, like comparative thing to make people understand what exactly it is. That is what we're going to pretend it is. And this particular class file is going to look something like this. So we go inside a, another file and instead of having a bunch of functions, we actually have a class which is going to encapsulate a bunch of properties and methods that has a specific purpose. So in this case here, we have a property or we have two properties. Actually, these are called fields if you have to be very specific here. Uh, then we go in and we actually say we want to assign some data to these fields. So when we actually call upon this class here and create a object based off of this class or this blueprint we have here, then we can assign data to the object by passing in data into 
the class when we actually instantiate it. And then we have a method inside the class itself that is kind of like a function. Again, just to use some comparative words for people who's never done it before to understand what this is. Uh, this is kind of like a function where you go in and you just do the validation and authentication like you would inside that other function inside the previous example. So what you then do inside the form handler when you call upon this file is you create a object based off the class because a class is a blueprint but we can create a object that has all the information that is inside this class, but the object is going to change depending on what we pass into the class when we actually instantiate this class here. This is not supposed to turn into a tutorial, Daniel. Okay, we're not, <laughs> we're not supposed to teach about classes in this video, uh, but just to give an idea about how it is different. Uh, so basically, instead of having just a bunch of functions inside a file where the file is named according to what the functions are supposed to do. So all of a sudden we have all these different files with different functions in it. We instead create a class file that has properties and methods inside of it that has basically information about this particular feature you might have inside your website. So you can have a, um, you can have a class here. In this case, we could call it user. We could also call it login. So it's more specific to the login system uh, where you just basically go in and you have all this information like you typically would with functions as well inside this class here. But now using classes is also going to give you a bunch of different good things about it. For example, that you encapsulate all the different, you know, features that you have inside all the different code into different classes that can then extend to each other in order to only be able to access certain classes if it comes from another class, which means that we can take more sensitive code and put it inside a sensitive class that should only be accessible to certain other classes. And in this sort of sense, when we have very sensitive code, we can make sure it only gets run under certain conditions where some classes can access it. So like there's a bunch of things here when it comes to classes and I can talk about this forever, but there's a lot of benefits to using object oriented PHP versus procedural PHP. So why do people not like object oriented PHP versus procedural? Why do some people fight so heavily for doing procedural PHP inside a website? I think the first thing that needs to be pointed out here is that the mindset of having procedural PHP being better than object or into PHP or object or into PHP being better than procedural PHP is kind of a wrong mindset to have. I can completely understand that some people, they have a preference towards one or the other, but it is also important to keep in mind that these are just tools that are used in order to do something inside your application, in this case here, a website. So in some cases where you might have a certain website that only needs one little feature using PHP, for example, just a contact form, you know, of course you wouldn't be using object or into PHP in order to do that because it is just a contact form. There's no extensive features that are planned in the future so there's not really any reason to overcomplicate the code. And that's really one of the key points that I also have to talk about when it comes to object oriented PHP, because yes, object oriented PHP is much more complex than just doing procedural. For the beginners watching this video, essentially what procedural is, is when you have a place inside one of the pages inside your website where you need a certain piece of code, then you go into that place inside the page. For example, inside this index page here, let's say I need to add a contact form at the bottom here. I would just go in, create my PHP tags, and I would just start creating all the code for my contact form. That is a procedural PHP mindset. But when it comes to object oriented PHP, we all of a sudden take this code and we split it apart and we encapsulate it into different files and different classes. And all of a sudden we have many different uh, code spread out all over the place, which is going to make things a little bit more organized and scalable when it comes to larger applications. But when it comes to just a small feature, like for example, a contact form, yes, you should most likely not overcomplicate things by spreading everything out into different classes. So there is no such thing as procedural PHP or object or into PHP being better than the other. You have to look at the specific application you're sitting with. And from that you can determine is one of them going to be better because yes, for example, when it comes to a login system, I think personally we're moving into a area where it gets a little bit more complex with the PHP application but we need to make sure that we can actually scale things properly and have everything organized when it comes to the code so in those sort of situations I do not think that procedural PHP is going to be a benefit because now we're moving into a more complex PHP application for your website in order for more advanced features when it comes to using a backend language inside your website. And yes, there is pros and cons when it comes to using both procedural and object or into PHP. I can, for example, give you a small list here of things that is pros and cons for both of them. So again, 
Uh, it really depends on the application you're sitting with and you have to determine which one is going to be better for your particular project. For example, if you have a certain application that is going to have a lot of performance critical applications inside of them, then you may consider some aspects of your application being procedural since object oriented is a slightly more uh, complex when it comes to performance. So again, there is pros and cons for both different types and you have to look at the individual thing or the, the thing, the application you're sitting with. And of course that is not going to stop people from just being heavily biased when it comes to, for example, being against or for object or into PHP. People will still come inside some videos or maybe underneath this video here heavily arguing for why optic or into PHP is just complete garbage or why procedural PHP should never be used. And this opinion can come from many different reasons. For example, some people just think the learning curve to learn optic or into PHP is too big and they don't want to get into it because it's very complex, which is going to lead to some biased opinions when it comes to, you know, arguing against optic or into PHP. Uh, but you also have people who just think that it is much more complex when it comes to optic or into PHP because the code all of a sudden gets a little bit more less hard to read if you're not careful about it you need to make sure you organize things properly inside object or into php to make sure the classes make sense and there's comments explaining what exactly things do because when you start taking apart code and splitting it out into different files and different classes you need to make sure that there is a system going so people can actually look at these and understand where the code is. And to some people, this organization here or the mindset of splitting things into different files instead of just having everything in one place is going to be something they have a hard time grasping. Because if you have to be honest here, I can see where that opinion is coming from. I can definitely see how a certain mindset where you say, okay, well, I need a contact form right here. So therefore this is the place inside my website, inside that particular file that I'm going to put my PHP code for that particular application. So all of a sudden, when you start splitting code into different files, all of a sudden you're going away from this very simple mindset of this is where the code needs to be. So therefore this is where it is going to be inside my file to, okay, so now we have a file for contacting the database and we have a file for performing actions when the user submits data. And then we have another file for showing something inside the website. All of a sudden we have all these tasks split out. And that can be a hard thing to grasp, especially as a beginner. Some people are also gonna give more geeky, <laughs> geeky, um, technical concerns about object oriented PHP, which could, for example, be performance, because yes, object oriented PHP is slightly more performance heavy when it comes to the code, because there's a encapsulation and you have to instantiate classes and that kind of thing. So again, the important point here that I'm trying to make is there's no such thing as one of them being better than the other. It is much about what exactly are trying to build inside this website here. And do you actually plan for this to be more scalable in the future? Do you plan to add more features to this website? Because if you do, then maybe you should start out with object or into PHP. So you do have a foundational system that you can actually build upon in a much more practical sense. So again, just a small rant here to give my personal take on this because I do know that a lot of people have a very strong opinion about one or the other. And I do see a lot of these opinions a lot inside my videos, which by the way, small advertisement here, I do have a object or into PHP course and I do also have a procedural PHP course, which I just updated. So if you're interested in learning PHP, I do have different, what is it called? playlist that you can watch. So we do have something inside this channel here that is going to be very beneficial for people. So with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video here and I'll see you guys next time.